Hello everyone, this is Dr. Bob Browner with Community Coronavirus Update number 96. Today we'll talk about learning to live with versus learning to manage COVID, the long surge, and uh, safe holiday ideas. Uh, and so uh, I'll start with the first topic, learning to live with versus learning to manage. This is uh, frustrating to me because you know, we didn't just accept learning, live, learning to live with other pandemics, we managed those pandemics. And so I've used this uh, uh, part of my own family history. These are my great-great-grandparents, Otto and Anna Runquist. Uh, three of whose children died of uh, past infectious diseases like typhoid and diphtheria that we don't hear much about anymore. Uh, we didn't learn to live with these diseases. We learned to manage these diseases, and that's why half of children don't die anymore from infectious diseases like this. Uh, another from more famous Willie than Willie Rehnquist was Willie Lincoln, who also died of typhoid in the White House. Uh, this happened because uh, they were basically drawing uh, contaminated water in the Potomac from upstream because the Union Army was camped upstream pooping in the river. Uh, this is before they understood things like sanitation and how it made a difference and would have prevented a lot of infectious diseases back then, like typhoid and cholera, for example. Again, we didn't learn to live with these diseases. We learned to manage these diseases, as we've done most of the pandemics that killed millions and millions of people in the past. So if we go through a long history, for example, plague is one of, a, one of the biggest scourges of history. Uh, this one wasn't controlled with, uh, with uh, vaccination, but it was controlled with sanitation and antibiotics. Uh, we still have the plague. It's still around. There's uh, still CDC guidelines on prevention. We do still have a few cases a year. Uh, typically it's from, uh, from you know, unsanitary conditions, you know, rodents, things like that. We don't have open sewers full of rodents anymore like we used to. That's one reason why we don't have plague around anymore. But it's still possible. You still can get it. And occasionally there's a few cases a year where people are treated. Uh, this is a combination of, of sort of, you know, general public health sanitation and antibiotics is enough to control the plague. Uh, uh, typhoid, again, also clean water and sanitation control, so we don't vaccinate against typhoid for the most part in the United States, although there's areas of the country or areas of the world where you do have to get a typhoid vaccine. I have been vaccinated against typhoid in the past because I went to Central America in an area that didn't have the clean water and sanitation that was enough to control. But almost every th all these other diseases we controlled uh, almost solely through vaccination. So vaccination is the main strategy. We don't learn to live with, we learn to manage uh, infectious diseases. Um, and the reason is sometimes actually it's you know better to be vaccinated than to get the disease itself. So for example, this study in morbidity mortality weekly showing that people who are vaccinated versus people who got Im uh, got some immune response by getting infected themselves, the vaccine was actually a much more provided a much stronger and more lasting immunity than actually getting coronavirus. Uh, I usually tell people think of getting coronavirus the hard way is, is equivalent to one dose of Pfizer, not two or three, but maybe one. But still, you need more, uh, and so. Getting the infection, quote, naturally and getting natural immunity itself does not work and does not provide persisting immunity that such that it, this is controlled. Uh, and this isn't unusual. And so I think part of the problem is people have, are trying to approach everything from the lens of measles or varicella, uh, both of which are, are what I would call sort of one and done diseases. Once you get it, you're typically immune for life. And that's why it only takes two doses of a vaccine for those two. But if you look at the vaccine schedule, it's only those two uh, diseases that are two doses. Most of the rest of these are repeated doses, anywhere from three to six or even more. So, uh, so the, you know, the, my uh, two uh, great, great uncles and aunts who died of diphtheria. Uh, if you, uh, you are an adult, you've had not one, two, three, four, five, even a sixth dose of diphtheria before you reach adulthood. So that's six doses for diphtheria. We don't hear about diphtheria anymore, not because we didn't rely on a two-dose vaccine series. We keep vaccinating and most people keep getting tetanus boosters, which is a TD or a TDAP the rest of their lives because immunity diphtheria is not permanent. You need boosters every five to 10 years for diphtheria and tetanus. Others are even more frequently, of course, in influenza, which is yearly. So this is not an unusual thing that a vaccine might need three or four or six or even yearly doses. We still don't know for sure how, what trajectory coronavirus will, will, will play out This because it's a new, new disease. We haven't studied it long enough. We know it looks like at least three doses for people who are older, uh, and it may be more in the future, and that's okay. That's, the, that's like I said, it's not a unique in history for, vac, for a vaccine preventable disease to act like this. Um, and countries can manage. So one of the things I don't like this sort of fatalism, like we have to just accept it. We could manage it and prevent most of these deaths. A uh, common example, South Korea, if you look at the U.S. and U.K., we kind of keep fighting with each other to see who can mis mismanage this pandemic worse, which us or them. And unfortunately, we've overtaken them again. Uh, we'll see if they'll pass us back up back again. Uh, this is a race we don't want to win, but we are winning it currently, at least versus the U.K. Good news is we haven't done the worst. We haven't done as bad as, say, like Russia or Brazil, at least. Uh, but South Korea and many other countries have manage this appropriately because they have not forgotten lessons of history that we seem to have forgotten in the United States. 
uh, remember that all, most managed successful management of public health uh, efforts is a layered approach. So not everything is perfect. So people say, well, why, why, why are masks? Because they're not perfect. Well, because we're never, we've never claimed that masks were perfect, uh, but they're one layer among many other layers that would make a difference if we wanted to successfully uh, manage this pandemic, as opposed to letting it kill another 50 or another 100,000 Americans more than we have to. So future direction will we take, like I discussed last week, more of a UK versus a, a, an Italian strategy. Um, you know, if you look at the, you know, uh, current case rates, you know, UK is uh, actually worse than us now, so they could pass us again. We'll see what, ha what happens. United States is sort of smoldering. Italy's way down here. They are coming up a little bit, but nothing like the rest of, uh, of Europe. Hopefully they'll, their layers will be enough to manage uh, things appropriately, but they have kept layers in, approach in, uh, in place, unlike most of the U.S., so, for example, the Green Pass, which I'm a big advocate for, I think this would be better, much better than, than mandating vaccines. I, uh, I think the vaccine mandates could get hold of in court, and so that might not help us a lot. I wish we'd just adopt this digital uh, Green Pass similar to the way the European Union is doing. Uh, it's not that bad. Uh, I, we used it when we were in Italy for a couple of weeks. Uh, basically, the Green Pass works for a couple of things. They do give you some credit for a past vaccination, but for only six months, because that's about the, the about the typical time that the, the that the immunity from an inf infection lasts. So that you have to either be fully vaccinated, proof of infection lasts six months, or a negative rapid test in the last 48 hours. Uh, and I think it would work for us if we would adopt this. So I hope this uh, something we do come around with uh, soon. Although the new uh, oral pills might make this uh, unnecessary uh, by January. February if they're out, but that I wouldn't rely on that alone. So a vaccine only strategy, if you wanted to do that, you could, but it'd probably have to be well over 85% vaccinated against COVID for that to work. Uh, almost nobody's actually gotten there. Uh, and so, yes, there are a few countries up in that 85 plus percent. Uh, their numbers are actually really low. However, those countries are probably going to have to get a third dose to some of those people. This is only two doses for a lot of those folks. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the future with those countries. Uh, Nebraska, so the next uh, topic is, is, is our prolonged surge. Uh, so this has not, not been a rapid up and a rapid down, unfortunately. We're smoldering along uh, for months because we've not put in those other strategies. We don't have the peak like last time because we have so many more people vaccinated, but we still have enough people unvaccinated that this is still a, a problem. We've got almost 40% of the population that's not vaccinated. It's still a lot of bread to burn. Uh, the immunity is temporary, so yeah, people got infected here. They're getting infected again, and the evidence is pretty solid that that happens. Uh, here in Nebraska, the, the other problem, of course, when case rates go up, hospitalizations tend to go up. So the state brought back its, dash, brought its dashboard yet again because hospitalizations are over 400. So they're creeping back up there again. Uh, it looks like they might be headed up even higher, unfortunately. Uh, if you look at Douglas County, you'll see the same thing. Case rates dropped. Now they're headed back up again. And again, that uh, is what causes the hospitalization. Uh, an added problem is just, just, just the capacity and burnout problems. Uh, yes, we had a higher peak back in November, December, but it went up fast, it went down fast. This is just hovering. And the other problem that they're running into, this created a lot of backlog for everything else in healthcare, everything from heart surgeries to hysterectomies to knee replacements. And so the capacity problems in the hospital are going to be a problem. And so you'll see that the total hospital capacity now is as high as it's ever been. I've talked to a medical ethicist at, the, at a hospital in Omaha and says that they've actually been one, one multi-car pileup away from hitting crisis standards of care, meaning if you get a heart attack or a stroke or develop a cancer, you may not get treatment because there's, they may just may not be any capacity in Omaha, for example. And so we need to get people to quit acting like that we just have to give up on this because we have to get things under better control. Um, other countries are having the same problem. Germany is experiencing the same uh, issues that we are. Uh, Colorado across uh, the border, same problems that we're, we're struggling with right now too, same problems. Uh, Lincoln, uh, our numbers are headed back up again as well. Uh, our hospitalizations haven't quite gotten back up to where they were before, but you know we've got the mask ordinance and we've got the highest vaccination rate of any of most counties in the state. So hopefully that's what's causing that to go down. And of course, remember half of those hospitalizations aren't from Lincoln; they're from someplace else in Nebraska that's sending their play, their people our, our way. Unfortunately, though, our positivity rate is is up just like the rest of the state, and that's usually a, a harbinger of other things going back up again. So we'll see what happens in the coming weeks. Uh, we're seeing the same thing in our schools. The Lincoln Public Schools puts a public dashboard where it shows all its rates, and we peaked out about 1,500 kids isolated. Uh, we're now back up to about 710. Uh, this is an incomplete year, week, so the numbers aren't quite lower, but our, our total positive cases that are lab positive are also going up again. Uh, again, as people are dropping their guard. The uh, school rates really reflect the community rates at this point. There's only so much the schools can do to control this. 
Uh, if you look at specific Bryan Medical Center, I think they're doing a great job searching me uh, on social media the breakdowns of who's in, va uh, in the hospital and, and uh, characteristic about them. Again, most of the people in the hospital are unvaccinated. Uh, there are some vaccinated. However, most of those people that are vaccinated in the hospital are people who did not get their third dose. Uh, and also, they tend to be elderly. They're the people who are, who are in criteria for getting that third dose. Um, however, if you look at the sickest people, uh, they're all unvaccinated again. So all the ICU and ventilated patients in Bryan Hospital uh, are actually unvaccinated people. And we had a guy in his 20, 20s who died this week. But, you know, the people who are, landing, who are dying that are vaccinated, most of those, uh, I've been told by the, by the critical care people, are people who should have gotten a third dose but haven't. Uh, they got that, uh, those, their two shots back in, you know, December, January, February. It's been more than six months. Their immunity's waned. They need their third vaccine. So if you're older than 65 or obese or have a chronic medical condition, please get a booster shot as soon as possible because we need uh, to free up hospital capacity to take care of everybody else. That's preventable. Uh, again, back to children again. Uh, so uh, they released a, a deaths for October. Uh, we're up to 576 pediatric doses for the length of the pandemic uh, compared to the last 10 years of influenza uh, for the last uh, uh, stacking those seasons over the same duration. It's about twice as deadly uh, than influenza. So although it's lower risk, we don't have 700, it's not, nothing come close to the 750,000 adults that have died, but still it's more than half to die. Uh, and in the, yes, the childhood vaccinations do come with some side effects, specifically in the adolescent males. But if you look at the chances of getting myocarditis from the, vi from the vaccine at 8.62 per 100,000, it's still less than it is from getting coronavirus, which is 11.5 per 100,000. So even in that one higher risk uh, category, it's still lower than actually getting coronavirus. So still your best money is getting vaccinated. Uh, which leads us to kind of the next discussion is safer holidays. We're coming up to November, December, plus it's uh, colder, so people are getting indoors. Unfortunately, that creates a very uh, bad situation for a pandemic if people aren't being safe. We have ways to be safe. Mostly that's vaccination, of course. Uh, Caitlin Jettelina put in a nice uh, update last week, uh, kind of going through what her what she would consider ways to approach an upcoming holiday season. So I'd refer you to that to kind of read the full discussion. I think she always does a really good job in providing a nice, concise update. You know, the easy solution is everybody get vaccinated, uh, but unfortunately there may be uh, family members who either can't get vaccinated yet or partially vaccinated or won't. Uh, there's a second alternative too. If, you, if not everybody's vaccinated, well, you can do a rapid test. And so uh, when we went to Italy and came back, we had to prove a negative test. And you can get these Binex Now tests in you know, two and six packs, for example. Uh, if you want to make it official, don't open the packet. You can actually sign on to the app and it can be proctored. Then that, then this rapid test is actually approved for travel. So you don't have to find a place. And the, the, the roughly 25 bucks for the test is cheaper than going to an urgent care center, that, which may charge you 50 to 100, a couple hundred dollars. So if you want it to be official, log onto the app and have it proctored. They'll, essentially what they do is they'll scan your QR code, they'll watch you swab your nose, you put it in here, 15 minutes later you, they take a picture of this and show it, and then it's actually an approved travel approved test. We actually did this in, the, in, the, in our hotel room in Italy before coming back. Uh, but if it's just, you know, six people come over to your house, you can just get a six pack, everybody just drop the six drops in the little, little dropper hole, swab their nose, stick it in, wait 15 minutes, and it's kind of like, it's as simple as a pregnancy test. And these are actually very accurate for determining infectiousness. They're not as sensitive as a PCR, but they're just as good as far as determining infectiousness. And that's really what you want the day when people are over Thanksgiving or Christmas. So this is another alternative for you to, to create a safer holiday if there's some folks who don't want to get vaccinated. Uh, but remember, just like the flu shots, the best way to protect grandma is to get her grandkids vaccinated. Uh, as you get older, your immune system isn't as good. That's why the vaccines aren't as good in the elderly. Well, one way we protect grandma is we vaccinate all of our grandkids. So if you care about your grandparents, make sure those grandkids get vaccinated. It's open to age five now. Um, uh, we had over 1,500 that were vaccinated at Lincoln High last Saturday. They're doing school-based uh, clinics, uh, at least uh, in many areas of the state. Uh, also, they're available at pediatric offices, at federal college of health centers, many local pharmacies. Uh, but be patient. Uh, there are some logistics in getting that many doses out that fast. But uh, I think this will make a, a dent uh, pretty quickly for, uh, for the holidays, hopefully. Uh, and then, yeah, if you want to go through the whole logistics of why this doesn't ramp up immediately, uh, Dr. Gentilina gave, it, gave another good update of that as well. So hopefully this is helpful to you. Uh, this is what I do for a day job, so you can kind of verify who I am. But disclaimer, these are my opinions, not necessarily those of everybody I work with and for.